In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use the sine rule to find a missing angle. Now, with all of the formulae you'll be given, uh, all, all of the trig formulae you'll be given in your formula sheet, they will all relate to this type of triangle, where you have the triangle ABC, and each of the sides of the triangle are given a name which relates to the angle opposite the side. So side C is opposite angle C, side B is opposite angle B, and so on. <clears throat> now, the sine rule is as follows. Side A over sine of the angle A is equal to side B over sine of the angle B, and it's also equal to side C over sine of the angle C. So the three ratios are equal to one another. Now, it's important that you know which tool to use for which job when it comes to trigonometry. And you've got to make sure that you only use the sine rule when the question involves two pairs of opposites. So by pairs of opposites, I mean a side and its opposite angle. Okay, so you can think of each of these as a pair of opposites. And the question will always involve two pairs of opposites and you'll be given three bits of information and you'll be asked to find out something that is unknown. Okay, so let's have a look at a few examples. Okay, so here's our first question. There's a pair of opposites. There's a pair of opposites. So we start off just by saying that 7 over sine x, that that's equal to 8 over sine 70. We can then use cross multiplication to get everything onto one level. So we end up with 8 times sine x is equal to 7 sine 70. Dividing both sides by 8, we then end up with sine x being 7 sine 70 over 8. You do inverse sine to get x, so we do inverse sine of all of this, so 7 sine 70 over 8. Just be careful when you're doing that, that you maybe do 7 sine 70, uh, then perhaps press equals, divided by 8, press equals again, then do inverse sine, just to make sure that you don't end up uh, with the wrong answer. And that gives you, to one decimal place, an angle of 55.3 degrees. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Identify that you need to use a sine rule, fill in the blanks with the information you know, and then we are injured to find x by doing inverse sine at the end. Okay, here's another example. Again, two pairs of opposites. There you have an angle and its opposite side, and also there. So we can start off by saying, well, 5 over sine x, that's equal to 11 over sine 52. Okay, we can then use cross multiplication and say 11 sine x is going to be equal to 5 sine 52. We divide both sides by 11, we find that sine x is equal to 5 sine 52 over 11. And then to get x on its own, you have to do inverse sine. And when you do that, and inverse sine all of this, you end up with an answer of 21 degrees. Okay? That's what you get when you do inverse sine of what I've circled there. Okay? Now, sometimes you might be faced with a question like this. And you might be asked to find an angle when the opposite side is unknown. Now, you might say to yourself, well, this isn't a sine wheel question because the question doesn't involve two pairs of opposites. You've only got one pair of opposites. But if you are to find this angle first, then you can use the fact that if you know two of the angles in a triangle, you can use the fact that they all add up to 180 to find what you are looking for. So there is a pair of opposites. So if we first of all find angle Y, then we can easily find angle x. So let's do that. Let's find angle y. So we'll say 23 over sine y. 
That's going to be equal to 15 over sine 35. Getting everything onto one level leaves us with 15, 15 sine y. And that's going to be equal to 23 times sine 35. Divide everything by 15 so that you're left with sine y on its own. So sine y is equal to 23 sine 35 over 15. And then now that you know what sine y is, you just do inverse sine of this to find y, and you end up with y being 61.6 degrees. Now that you know two of the angles, you know that this one is 35, you know that this is now 61.6, all you have to do to find angle x is just say, well, angle x is going to be 180 minus 61.6, and you also take away 35. And you end up with angle x being 83.4 degrees. Okay, so just be on the lookout for questions like that, where it might not be immediately obvious that it's a sine rule question. Okay, here's a couple of questions for you to try yourselves. So firstly, find angle x in the triangle at the top, then find angle x in this one down at the bottom. So pause the video, have a look back at the questions, and then come back and check and see how you got on. Okay, All right, let's do the first one and see what we would do. That's a pair of opposites. That's a pair of opposites. So this question is definitely a sine rule question. So we'll start off by saying 15 over sine x. That's going to be equal to 8 over sine 27. Cross multiplication, you end up with 8 sine x is 15 sine 27. That gets everything onto one level. You want x as your subject, so we'll divide by 8, so that we're left with sine x on the left-hand side, because the 8s will cancel out. So sine x is equal to 15 sine 27 divided by 8. So if we do inverse sine of everything that I've circled there, then that will give us our angle x, and x is going to be 58.3 degrees. Okay. Now, for the second one, what have we got? Well, there's one pair of opposites there. Now, we're asked to find this angle, but there's no side mentioned. So what we'll have to do is, just like one of the questions we did previously, find this angle, and we'll call it y. And that will then give us two pairs of opposites. And we can make use of the fact that all three angles add up to 180 to get out uh, angle x. Okay, so we'll start off by saying 70 over sine y is equal to 56 over sine 47. Get everything onto one level. So you end up with 56 sine y equals 70 sine 47. Divide both sides by 56. That then gives us sine y on its own. So sine y is going to be 70 sine 47 over 56. We can do inverse sine of this to give us y. So y is going to be 66.1 degrees. And if you make use of the fact that all three angles in the triangle add up to 180, and you take away the two angles you've got from 180, you end up with uh, so 47. You end up with x being 66.9 degrees. Okay, so that's how you use a sine rule to find a missing angle. Remember, the question will always involve two pairs of opposites and uh, take care when you're working your way through each solution. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.